Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Before we get started on today's video, I'm pleased to announce that I'm going to launch my Patreon this weekend, and I'd love to have you check it out. Um, really glad I have the YouTube audience that I have, and I'm excited now to be able to offer kind of a more interactive community where we can share ideas and projects. Well, I, I learned so many things from so many people um, when I have interactions with them, so and everybody has such good ideas that it's always nice to find uh, a place where you can share those with each other. So some of the things that will be featured in the Patreon are, um, I think it'll be an easier way to communicate with everybody. It should be a better platform where I can perform Q and A kind of sessions, and it should be a, a better way to go through more difficult projects, maybe in a live way, uh, in some context. Uh, there should be no ads. On the content there and on some of the tiers uh, you'll have the ability to vote on upcoming content. There's going to be four different tiers that you can choose from depending upon how involved in the community you want to be and uh, so if you're interested I'm going to put that information and a link down in the video description and uh, I hope that you can find me on Patreon and sign up. I'd love to have you there. Uh, I'm still going to continue to post projects and videos on YouTube as well. This shouldn't change that at all. Uh, it's just another venue for me to interact with people. Uh, with that being said, uh, today's project, I think I'm going to make a turquoise tennis bracelet. Uh, I haven't done a link bracelet with stones yet. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've done a link bracelet yet. So this should be a fun one to do. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, let's get started. So I picked out some turquoises. These are little turquoises. I think I got them from China Mountain Turquoise, maybe. Um, I got five here. And I was going to make a tennis bracelet, but I was going to make every other link a stone. So it would be a stone and then a piece of uh, hammered silver. Stone, hammered silver, stone, hammered silver, stone, hammered silver, stone. And I made some prototypes for the, for the settings. So, um, so this would be one. It's got uh, the materials that I'll need for this, basically, are... 3 16th inch fine silver um, 28 gauge bezel is what I used for that. Uh, the bottom is 18 gauge sterling silver sheet and these are pieces of 16 gauge um, round sterling silver wire. And uh, the other thing that I used for the other, this is the middle link here that's going to be, it's hammered. It's hard to tell because it's uh, it's been heated up and it's not shiny yet. Uh, but that's going to be the center link here and that's a piece of 18 gauge sterling silver that I've hammered and then this is some 22 gauge that I actually ran through the rolling mill to make it a little bit skinnier so it's probably closer to 24 gauge now <clears throat> but somewhere in that range would be a good size for this because I had to make these little uh, fold over things to be the, to be the way that these uh, links connect and so um, I'm going to make one of each of these in front of the camera and then I'll make the rest of them off camera so you don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over again. Uh, and then we'll come up with a way to do the, the closure. Uh, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do that one yet, but we'll figure it out as we go. And I have a backup. If I need an extra turquoise, I got a backup when it's a little bit bigger, so we might have to put that one in the center or something. <laughs> okay, but we'll, let's, uh, let's get started. Let's make... Uh, make one of the center ones here and uh, what I've done here's a piece of that uh, 22 gauge sheet that I cut a thin strip of I think it was about 3 16 inch wide and uh, I rolled it through the rolling mill to make it a little bit thinner and then I annealed it which is where you heat it up to the point where it's almost a dull red and then let it cool and that softens the metal up so um, earlier I made some length estimate and then I adjusted it based on one that I made as a as a temporary one of these before I soldered this one on uh, to find out how long it needed to be so this is the one that I originally bent into that shape and I can use that as a guide for how big of a piece to cut off of here and so I'm going to cut that off and I'll do more as I need more but uh, to start with that's our first piece, so let's shape that. And 
And then I'm going to use my um, round nose pliers, the very, very smallest end of them, because I'm going to try and get a relatively, uh, relatively small loop that rolls over the ends of this thing here. Since these are tapered, you got to go back and forth from one side to another, otherwise you get one side that's bigger than the other. Okay. I don't actually want it to go all the way to where it touches, because I'm going to solder this to the back of a piece of 18 gauge sterling like that and I don't want them to accidentally get a little solder up there and, and solder closed. Right. We're getting kind of a one-sided scroll sort of deal going on here. And that's what I want for this. And I decided for the size, I have this, um, have this lapidary template that I use a lot when I need an oval or a little circle. And I, I decided on this one right here is the size that I'm going to make these. And so I'm going to take a piece of 18-gauge uh, sheet. And then I can just scroll it on the inside of it. Uh, I usually cut out a, a rectangle around it first if I'm doing something like this. And then I'll trim it down and file it. People use a saw to do this, but I have an aversion to sawing unless I absolutely necessary. Unless it's absolutely necessary. And now I'm going to do a little uh, to shape this better. Okay, I'm going to do a little texturing of it. I'm just going to use the, the peen on the back of my chasing handle. Okay, okay. So I want to keep it aligned along the longer axis of this oval right there still. So I'm kind of make a mark and kind of see where that thing should be aligned. I extend it to the back which is still smoothish. So I'm going to flux them both. Um, I'm going to sweat a little bit of solder on the back of this textured piece that I just made. And then I'll just flip this over and we'll try and get it to solder down there. Those of you who are new to my channel, I use um, pretty much exclusively hard silver sheet solder. And I use a spray-on flux called uh, Mighty Flux. Rio Grande. Started to say that during my videos because I get asked that a lot.
go there. Once that liquefies, this thing's probably going to slide around a little bit on that pillow of molten solder. So I may need to move it around a little bit with the tweezers so I can use my pick. Oops. <laughs> I have a tendency to overcorrect sometimes. Yeah, I believe that's that's pretty straight. I kind of lined it up on one of these pieces of 16 gauge I'm going to use for the little bars. And that looks about right though. Okay. Go ahead and make a bezel. For the next one, because I got I got this thing made now. Okie dokie. So, um, set on these ones, I used a thick sheet on the bottom here. The only reason I used thick sheet on the bottom of these ones is because I was going to leave some of it sticking out here. If you use thinner sheet on the bottom of one of these kind of things and it's and you leave it sticking out like that, when you go to polish it, it's going to be kind of razor thin. And that's, I always thought that looked a little bit too flimsy. So. I use a little bit thicker sheet on stuff like this where I'm going to leave some edge on there. All right, but we need to find a spot on here that's bad enough. Oops, out of the way. I need to leave a little bit of lip on the outside. So I'm going to cut a piece and leave some extra space there. I'll trim this and file it so it's got a nice uh, oval, or at least as close as I can get uh, by eyeballing it anyway. Nice and crusty. Let's throw a few of these guys in there. Sound like an old guy. Next thing you know, I'll be shaking my cane on the front lawn at the kids.
whenever you're making something that has multiple iterations of it that you have to make, I always keep um, a piece as a measuring tool. So when I made these, I made sure to make an extra one that was pretty much the same. So I had one to use as a guide for future ones. So always make one extra of things when you're doing it. Um, something with multiple lengths or whatever. It just saves you having to remeasure or try to figure out how long you cut something before. Uh, it's kind of a time saver. So I'm just going to trim this, but leave close to a symmetrical lip about the same size as that one. Or a little bit bigger, and then I'll file it, file it down so it's neater looking. one of the other the other one I made here is a see how close I am to the side but I'm pretty close I don't think I have to do too much more so next step I need to make a couple more of these little staple shaped things and I'm using 16 gauge round wire for that so I'm just going to snip the end flat and what I did in order to get kind of consistent shapes is I made a little mark with a the uh, marker about the level or if I bend it right there at least uh, for the middle for this this part of it right here this length I can get pretty close if I just line it up like that then and just bend it there and then I can make slight adjustments in order to get it just right I'm going to keep this one off to the side where I can use it as a guide for other ones I'm going to make. <clears throat> Since I'm going to have to make multiple links here. One of the things to notice is that attaching these to a curve and so I might want to file those at a slight angle to match that curve a bit so I have a neater solder joint if I just do a little bit of an angle right on the inside of that part the same thing on the other side a kind of flattish sort of spot there get those as lined up as I can. I'm trying to keep this pretty linear. Sprayed that one right out of the way. All right, let's try it there. It's quite a bit of mass in the bottom part of this uh, base of the bezel here much more than there is in these wires. So I'm going to kind of avoid the wires, but focus on the, the bezel itself and the base that it's sitting on. Because it takes longer to get that up to temperature than it does these little wires on the sides. So once that starts to look like flowy, then we can get in there and get that pick touching right there. Thing to remember if you ever try to move something 
if it's connected the here and here but you're just trying to like rotate it around or something I sometimes get impatient and I see this one melt again I'm heating the whole thing up but this one hasn't melted yet if I push too hard while this one hasn't flowed this one may move but it's gonna it might just break off of there or it might uh, this uh, silver becomes fragile sometimes under the heat when you're doing that and so it's easier to break it so just be aware you got to get everything flowing before you can start moving things around but once you learn how to do that that opens up some doors as far as getting things uh, you know put together more symmetrically and straighter so, so basically alternating like that so now I just have to make know three or four more of these and three or four more of those and then come up with a way to do a clasp and then we'll have a bracelet that we can start putting together the last thing we'll do is um, at least before we polish it after we pickle everything really well is we'll close these up here I'm not going to solder those closed um, you probably could but you run the risk of you know getting stuff stuck where you don't want it to and Especially if you're kind of a beginner, I wouldn't try to solder those closed yet. Um, I think for this one, it'll be fine without. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn off the camera and make the rest of these so you don't have to watch me do it over and over again. But uh, when you see me in a minute, I should have some more. Pretty pooped out here, but I got all of this stuff pre polished and I filed the bezels down to about where I wanted them to be. <clears throat> so I just need to start hooking this stuff together and we can set the stones. So I'm just going to use my pliers to kind of gently push these down. getting tired so I'm trying to get this done so that I can post this Saturday uh, Saturday morning I start to make mistakes when I get too tired It'd be a shame to screw the whole thing up at this stage this is the end one with the narrower slot These kind of projects take quite a while, and I've cut a huge amount out uh, while we we're doing this. And uh, it'll probably end up taking me five hours, maybe six hours total. If you're new to this, give yourself plenty of time to work on a project like this. I see, I have to kind of go like that. I want to make that tight enough to where it, you have to kind of snap it in there. <clears throat> so as whoever's wearing it does not lose it. It's pretty hard to, unless you deliberate, deliberately do it because you can't pull it straight up like this. Panic thought that I had not turned on the camera. <laughs> Done that a couple of times. 
you've never watched one of my videos, I do things a little differently than some others. Most people use several different tools to do this. I just use the needle nose pliers or the chain nose pliers. <clears throat> it's got a nice flat spot here for most of the setting part. It gives me good leverage because of a uh, split handle like this. And the rounded outer part here you can burnish with. So we'll watch me do that in a second. Starting to look like a bracelet. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this with the <clears throat> with the little uh, textured things between it, but I think I really do. One more. <clears throat> okay, so I just need to um, take it to the polishing wheel and finish it up, and then uh, it should be wearable. So I'm going to wait until the morning to do that because I'm a little bit too tired to polish something challenging like a chain. Chains are a little dangerous to polish because you worry about part of it swinging loose and getting hung up in the wheel and, and uh, catching part of your body like a finger or part of your hand in there and pinching it really badly. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it when I'm a little more awake after a couple of cups of coffee in the morning. So uh, good night. Okay, so I polished it and I cleaned it up, and that's what we got. You can see that? I may have missed a little polishing compound. It's pretty tenacious in little nooks and crannies on things like this. So I'll probably have to run it through the ultrasonic to knock some of that stuff loose. But it just uh, looks like that. Okay, take a better picture and put it at the end, and, uh, and we'll see you later. That was the turquoise tennis bracelet video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. Uh, I'd also love to have you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, you can hit the bell for notifications when I put out a new video, which is on average uh, two to three times a week lately. Uh, I'm putting a lot of valuable content here, and I'd love to have you check out some more videos, and then maybe subscribe after that. So uh, make sure to, uh, to look at a few. Don't forget, I, I set up a Patreon this weekend, so visit that and see if it's something you'd be interested in. I'd love to have you check that out and maybe join that too. So uh, thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing. Take care.